Alléluia. Hello, first of all. We thank God for this beautiful and wonderful day. We, we were all expecting rain. Because this is what the forecast said. Today is going to rain. But we love the fact that the sun has come out. See, that's how much God loves us so dearly. That we should enjoy the day that He has given us. And today, we are glad to be here and sharing Christ with you. And I know that many people have a lot of questions in their mind when it comes to the things of God. But thank God that today you are alive, you are well, you are walking to and fro, strength is in you. But there is more than we waking up, going on our daily business. There is more to it. And Jesus Christ wants you to know who you are, where you came from, where you be going. There are some people who said, oh, when a man dies, that's the end of his life. When a woman dies, that's the end of her life. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be deceived. That's what the world, that Satan wants you to believe. Satan wants you to believe a lie. Satan wants you to believe deception. Satan wants you to be confused. But if you know, you see, as a human being, we have been given the opportunity, the opportunity to be reproduced. Meaning, we have to continue where God started. We have to continue what He has given unto us. And He said to man, Man, I've given you the opportunity and the uh, power to be able to give birth. So, as human beings, what we do is that we produce the body in the womb. We are the producers of the body in the womb. You see, but the real life is not of a man. The real life that we have today, as we are going, the Bible says, we are spirit beings. We are not just flesh. We are spirit beings. That's why when a man or a woman dies, their body remains here on earth. But the real person that is in this body, God said, that person will come and meet him. But God has given us the opportunity to have this life that he has given to you. He said the life you are living is not only life that you have to live on earth. There is a life after this life. And unfortunately, like my brother said, man has fallen into sin. And the Bible said the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So meaning we are meant to die in our sin. But the love of God for you and I, that because we have not caused this problem to ourselves, and it has been created from the day one, by the man who God created, he said he doesn't want any of us to perish for the mistake that somebody has done. So today as you are hearing us, ladies and gentlemen, first of remember the country that we all live on, the land we are walking on, is not the land of, of unfruitfulness. Is the land of fruitfulness. And this land is the land of Christ. Because this country was built upon Christ. This country, there are people who have sacrificed their, their lives to bring light into this land. You see, many people are rushing and coming to this country, not because of anything that is, is, is amazing here, 
but it's because they have seen a certain light. They have seen a certain light, and that light is Christ Jesus. That light is Christ Jesus. And this is the knowledge that God wants you and I to acquire. It's a knowledge, it's a key. Ladies and gentlemen, knowledge is a key. As you have been to school before, going to school is for you to acquire knowledge. And having the knowledge is for you to help you to live your life, to have a work, and to do and live your life as well as you want to live. But ladies and gentlemen, the word of God is a knowledge to us. And it's a knowledge unto life. That's why God said, the sin which man has done through the deception of Satan. And he has deceived mankind, he has deceived the whole world. And man, we are fall into, our, into the deception of Satan. And we are suffering due to the fact that somebody has caused such problem to the world. But God said the love he has for you and I, that you may not perish in instead of somebody's mistake. That's why the Bible said God so loved the world. That is David's only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, Whosoever. He did not say only Christian. He said, Whosoever. Meaning that God has a place for everyone. But he has given you the opportunity to receive this life that he has given unto everyone. It's not going to force it on you because you have your will and your free will to make that acceptation. But I said before that you receive, you have to hear. And before you hear, you have to believe. And before you believe, somebody has to tell you. And I thank God that he has brought people to share this good news with you. You see, when Jesus came, when God came on earth, and he became a man, he went about doing good. And what is this good that he was doing? He was drawing men to the life that he has brought, the salvation that he came to give unto man. Because when God created man, he gave the key of life to man. And the key that God gave to man, man gave it away. So God has to come and take away that key of life, the, the deceiver. So the key has been taken away from the, the Satan. And he said this life, this key is no more automatic like it used to be. Now you have to come and accept and believe that this is the key to your life. This is the key to your life. So ladies and gentlemen, as you are going back to and fro on your daily business, Jesus is saying to you today, he loves you. He doesn't wish that you perish. He doesn't want you to die in your sins. You see, and people say, how can I be judged? Like somebody asked me, why would somebody judge me? But one thing I want you to know and to know and to understand that God did not come to judge. He did not come to condemn. He said judgment is of you. You have to accept, you have to judge yourself. Then whatever judgment you give to yourself, God is going to pay on to judge you. That's why he said, give us the options. He said, life and death, choose one you want to choose. But I said to you and I, that is wish for you and I, that we may choose life. If Jesus is the bad person, he will not say to you, choose life. He will say to you, go and die. He will say to you, go to hell. But I said, hell is not for you. 
is not for me. He has not created hell for any man. He created hell for Satan and his angels. But Satan is working 24 7, deceiving humanity to come within. But the way to life, Jesus has given you and I. And he said, if you will hear him as we are talking, do not harden your heart. Because today is the day of salvation. Your life will be transformed and be turned around because Christ has provided you the source of change. You see, we have lived a life as we are all here. Don't, don't you not think we are, we are far better than any of you? We have lied before, we have stolen before, we have fornicated before, we have done so many things. But let me tell you, you see, those things are spirits that when you get involved in, it will possess you. You see, but when Christ comes into your life, what he does is, he takes away those spirits and he gives you the free spirit, which is his spirit. There are a lot of things which are going on in our lives, which we have been tormented with. But Jesus Christ is saying to you, you are not meant to be in that source of life. Are you being affected by alcoholism? Are you being affected by drugs? Jesus Christ is able to deliver you from that spirit. Because Jesus said we have to be mindful and be careful the sort of spirit we get ourselves engaged in. Because there are so many spirits walking around us. And whatever spirit you get engaged with is the spirit, whether it's good or bad, is what is going to affect you. You see, my Bible says God is good. God will never come and give you a bad spirit. Because he said in his word, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It takes a certain power to be able to love a human being. It takes a certain power to be able to have a sanity. Because what you have in your mind or in your being, if you don't have that certain power, you will not be able to overcome. And I thank God that we have been to places whereby people have testified. They said they used not to believe in God. They used not to believe in God. They get engaged with certain spirits and get to a point they want to come out of it. But in their own mouth, they said it gets to a time nobody could help them. They cannot escape from, from those spirits. And that's what Satan normally does. When you are dead in dead with him, he would want to destroy your life. Because that's what the Bible says. It came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So Cosmos, you are hearing us today. The gospel is being preached to you. And this word Jesus said, as you are hearing, this word you are hearing, will stand against you in the death day of judgment. But because God doesn't want to judge you, He is giving you the knowledge, the key to life. And this key to life is the word of God. And it's the word of God that will set you free. Because He has not given us the spirit of fear. Many people are walking in fear. Many people are walking in fear. And Bible says, when you are afraid, you make so many mistakes. Don't forget the land you are walking on. Because this land is the land of Christ. The foundation is Christ. You are walking upon Christ. But the Bible says, the building which are built upon this foundation is corrupt. But Christ is inviting you today. Christ is calling you today. He said, I don't want you to perish. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Christ said he doesn't want you to perish. That you, may, that you may come back to life. And the Bible says it is the way, the truth, and the life. It's love for you and I that you may have life. It's love for you and I that you may come back to eternity. That you may not be content. That you may not be destroyed. Thank you. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That you may come back to life. You see, but this life is not being given to man unless you accept it. You see, we have all been children before. A child, you giving a gold to a child, that gold will one day the other get out of the hand of the child. Because that child does not know the essential or the importance of the gold. You see, and God will not give you something that you have not asked. If you don't understand or you don't know what it takes, you will not be able to look at the or you care for it. That's why he said you have that way to make that choice and decision in life. That when you come back to life, you have the access to have the key of knowledge to life, you may not lose it. You see, so God is inviting all of us by Jesus Christ that we may have this life. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are going to and fro, you see, there are so many things that we are seeing which is not out of the word of God. Because when you read the book of Revelation, he has given us a clear thing that is coming to happen. And whatever God says, he said it's not the man that he should love. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Whatever he has said, so he do. And whatever he has spoken, that's what he performs. And he said, man will perish if he does not turn around and believe in Jesus Christ. Of course, people will say, why are you here? Out of your mind? Why are you talking out of uh, 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 top of your voice? You see, I would rather like to be mad to let you know what is here to come. I would rather be a crazy person to let you know what is yet to come. I would rather be a fool to let you know what is yet to come. Because when Jesus came, that's what they call him. They said to him, he had the spirit of the devil. But he said, listen, if you think I have the spirit of the devil, show your children will judge you when they come. Today we are letting you know First of that the love for you is that Jesus loves you. The God's love for you is that Jesus loves you. That he wants you to come back to eternity. Don't think when you die, that is the end of your life. Don't think when you die, that is the end of your life. The Bible says, it is appointed unto man once to die. And after death, that is. The what can it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in an exchange for his soul? There is a soul within you that God is one interest in. That soul is what God is calling. He said, when you die, that soul will perish if you don't come to Christ. Of course, people say, I'm a good person. I've not done anything bad. Of course, God did not create you to be bad, He created you to be good. He made you to come and be good. That's what He said. He made you in His image and likeness. So if God is good, He expects all of us to be good. But He said in His word, our good things are filthy right before Him. And He said in His word, that He is the one that knoweth how to save you. That's why he has made the way for you to come to life. That's why he has made the way for you to come to life. Life is not you getting the money and buying. This is eternal life. There is eternal damnation and eternal life. But God is saying to you, 
is life yours to make yourself to come back to life. To say, you may say whatever you want, you may say whatever you like, but on that day, that's where you realize that we are warning you. We are telling you what is yet to come. Because Revelation says, be wise. Be wise and have understanding to the things that you are hearing. Because God is going to judge the earth. But he said, before it comes, you have to judge yourself to life. You have the right to judge yourself to life. You have the right to judge yourself to the nation. But you have to have that knowledge to delay the way to life. That's why today we are here on top of our voices, telling you, warning you, saying to you that on that day you may not say, oh, there were Christians on earth, they have not told us, they have not warned us, they have not said anything to us. So as we are saying to you, as a human being, you have that decision to make. You have that choice to make. You have that right to receive and to refuse. But we are saying to you, whatever decision you make is for your own benefit. That's why Jesus says we should come and let you know. We should come and tell you that he loves you, he wants you not to perish. He wants you not to go to hell. Of course, many people don't want to hear the word hell. But you see, hell is not physical world that you have to see before you say, hey, it is real. Just as your spirit being, God wants you to know that there is hell. The name hell can say because he has a name. So as you are hearing us today, as you are passing to and fro, we are saying that God is calling you. He's calling you to life. He's calling you to his kingdom. He's calling you to peace. He's calling you to love. You see, there is hope in Christ. There is hope in the death of Christ. There is hope in the cross of Christ. There is peace in the restoration of Christ. That's why he says salvation is now. You have the choice to make your life turn around and receive life eternal. That's why Christ is inviting everyone. He's not a respecter of a person. He did not say, I love these people and I hate these people. He said, He loves everybody. And He's calling everyone to come to life. But He said, Anyone that does not believe in the Son of God will not have life eternal. And this is the difference between God and Satan. He has given you the choice to make. But Satan will not give you that right to make that choice because He will impose Himself on you. But God says to do that choice He has given you and the right He has given you, that you may come and make the right choice and come to life. As we are here, as you can hear us, we are not condemning or judging. But we are giving you the knowledge of God that you will make your choice and your right and your decision in life. Because the Bible says, a wise man who has understanding, he said, count the nomen of the beast. You see, the beast is not an animal, it's a human being. The Bible says, the beast has come and is here to throw men to hell. And it's to take a lot of people to hell. Because many people are chosen to go on the way that seems right unto them. But the Bible says, at the end of it, Death. Have you tied yourself to life or you tied yourself to death? This is the word of God to you today. This is the word of God to you today. Today we are here sharing this word with you. 
because we remember what your forefathers have done. For that reason, God is looking and saying, because of what your forefathers have done, He's giving you another opportunity. Opportunity to come to life. Opportunity to repent. Opportunity to turn around. Opportunity to come to peace. The peace of God is without understanding. We don't need to fully evaluate the work of God and the life of God before you have to believe. It's a death that come as you are. Just have faith. Because you are walking today, because you have faith that today you wake up and you move about. Coming to life is about faith. Believing in Christ is about faith. Coming to repentance is about faith. So God is giving you the opportunity to have faith in Him. So today, as you are hearing us from off, we are here to let you know that this city will not be a city without human beings. The real purpose of is you moving about. So God is looking into the real person that is in this flesh. Because this flesh will die. This flesh will depart one day. Whether we like it or not, this flesh will die. But there is a real person in you that will not die. That real person is the person that is going to face God. Because the Bible says, God given life is to you and your life has to go to God. So ladies and gentlemen, as you are hearing us this afternoon, Jesus said he loves you. He came and laid down his life that you may come back to life. He said he came and laid down his life that you may have peace. The peace of the Lord is without understanding. You don't need to understand before you have to believe. When you believe, you may have that peace. When you receive, you may have eternal peace. So today, as you are hearing us, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. If you believe that there is a devil and there is Satan, that you have to believe that there is a God that created you. As you believe and you have accepted, it's your decision and your choice. We are not here to impose anything on you, but we are here to give you the knowledge. Because Bible said, knowledge is the key. And the Bible says, lack of knowledge, my people perish. Without knowledge, you will make so many mistakes in life. That's why many of us go to school. That when you apply the knowledge, you may be able to implement in your life and to have a good job. That's why knowledge becomes a key. So without the knowledge of God to do, you may question, oh, okay, why have you heard about this thing? That's why today we are here to warn you. We are here to tell you. But it is your choice to accept or to refuse. But what I would say, do not say you have not heard. Do not say you have not been told. Do not say anybody, nobody has come to you. Just as you have your free will, to decide to listen or not to listen. On that day, Jesus will say to you, do you remember the day you hear people shouting on top of their voices and say to you, I love you, I love you. Turn around from your sin and come to me and I will save you. And you turn not to listen. Do not say we have not warned you. So we are saying to you today, first of all, that Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. Jesus wants you to understand the reality of life. He wants you to know who you are. He wants you to know where you came from. He wants you to know where you are going. He wants you to know where you end up. But it's up to you 
it's up to you to believe in human beings. Unfortunately, human beings will not save you. We will do our best to show each other's love, to support each other. But the reality of life is Christ Jesus. The reality of life is in Christ Jesus. You can choose to accept. You can choose not to accept. You can choose to have a different belief. It's okay, it's up to you. But what I will say to you is that whatever choice and decision you make in life, don't forget. Because your spirit will never forget. Your soul will never forget what decision you have made, the choices you have made in life. Because that's what God says. It's going to judge you based upon your judgment. What judgment have you given to yourself? What judgment have you given to yourself? Have you judged yourself to life? Or you have judged yourself to the nation? God is telling you. God is warning you. God is saying to you, do not die in your sins. Turn away from your sins. Repent from your sins. Receive life. Believe in life. Believe in the reality of life. Just as Jesus has given you this knowledge, I'm saying, may these words that we are giving you shouldn't be held against you in the day of judgment. But may it be a life unto you that through this word that you have heard, you will make the right decision and right judgment in your life. That when Jesus comes, you will be with him. When Jesus comes, you will have peace with him. When Jesus comes, you have eternal life. This is the good news that Christ has come, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So do not be deceived that this world is just the end of it. When you die, that's the end. It's not the end of your life when you die. The end of your life is when you are being judged. And many people are waiting. Many people who have departed and gone ahead of us, they are waiting on that day. But they are pleading on your behalf. They are pleading on your behalf and saying, God, have mercy on my son. Have mercy on my grandson. Have mercy on my daughter. Have mercy on my granddaughter. Have mercy on them that we have left behind. And God is saying to you, today as we are here, speaking, He said, if they could hear, they should listen. If they could hear, they should listen. So as you have here, listen what God is saying to you. Because on that day, don't say, nobody tells you. On that day, don't say, nobody warns you. On that day, don't say, Nobody before you. That's why today God has saved us. He has saved us from all that we used to do. Because the Bible says we shouldn't forget who we are, what we used to do, what we used to be. If God has given us the opportunity to live again, to have peace with Him. He said there are people who have to have that same thing, who have to have that same opportunity, who have to have that same opportunity to come to salvation. That's why today we are here on top of our voice. Say, come to Christ. Come to Christ. No man has done for another man. Nobody's blood can wash away anybody's sin. It's only God's blood that can wash away your sin. And that's what he has done on the Calvary. And he's saying to you, that is what has washed this country. You are walking in it today because people have sacrificed and laid the foundation upon Christ. You are enjoying today Christ as the foundation. 
to us you are going to and fro, God is expecting you so that you can be the reality of life. That's why today we are here telling you. We are here today informing you. We are here today letting you know that you are not this flesh. Because the Bible said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall a man give in an exchange for his soul? That's what we are. We are soul. We are soul. We are soul. And God wants you to know that your soul is very important to him. And that soul of yours is what is going to play the eternity of life. And that soul is aiming, is yearning for life. And that life is in Christ Jesus. So Jesus is calling you, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is inviting you, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is welcoming you, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a respecter of a person. Don't look at the flesh. Look at the spirit world. See beyond this physical world. See beyond this flesh. Because this flesh will perish. This flesh will end up down there. But your soul is what God is interested in. But it's up to you to let your, lay your soul to rest or lay your soul to damnation. That's why Jesus said, He came not to judge, He came not to condemn, but He came that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly. So we are not here to judge, nor that to condemn. Because a true believer will not judge. A true believer will not condemn. Because the Bible said, judge yourself that you may not be judged. For me to see clearly, I have to judge myself so that I will be able to see. That's how the love of God is all about. That you will come back to eternity. The life you have is not your own. The day you came and you were born, the first breath you took in is the life that God gave you. And that life will return back the same as it came. That's why today we are telling and saying, Jesus loves you. So at the end of our preaching, we will give each and every person an opportunity to respond to Christ. Because Christ came and gave us such opportunity. Yeah. So today, if you are hearing, if you are hearing my voice, Jesus said, don't know how to your heart. It's knocking, it's turning right at the door of your heart, knocking. And he's saying, open up. Open up, give me permission. Give me permission. Let me come in. And whatever situation, and whatever trouble, whatever pain you are going through, he will give you peace to overcome your problem. The world is full of problems. The world is full of problems. And these problems are not going to go away until we all depart. But God is giving us peace to overcome all these issues. So today, as you are hearing me, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is calling you. Jesus is welcoming you. And I'm, telling, I'm saying, if you want Christ in your life, I'm inviting you. It takes prayers. It does not take money. To buy salvation. Salvation is priceless. You cannot price salvation because salvation is free. So as you are passing by, if you are willing to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and give yourself to Christ, give me a way. Give me a way. And come. And Christ will give you life and life abundantly. So I'm going to say this prayer, if you are listening to me, 
you can repeat the prayers after me. And when you say those prayers, just find yourself a Bible believing church. Get baptized and be rooted in them and be filled with the knowledge of God that your life will be changed. So today, as I'm going to pray, you are hearing me, or you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, do not feel shy, because on that day, there is no shine. When it comes to life, you have to save yourself. Come to life. Come to life. And think afterwards what will happen because it's the life that will sustain you and will keep you going so i'm going to say a prayer so if you could hear me and want to be saved and come to christ you can repeat after me say dear lord jesus i've come to you today just as i am i know i am a sinner and I believe that you are the Son of God. That you came and died and laid down your life for my sin. That I may come back to life. I believe that you will come back again to take us with you. I surrender my life to you. That you be the Lord of my life. That you write my name in the book of life. That in your coming. You may remember me and accept me and take me with you through our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray. If you have said this prayer, congratulations. Christ has given you another opportunity, he has given you a new life. And I want you to take a bold step and move without faith and go to church a bible believing church and get planted and be rooted there god bless you for more jesus loves you and we love you too god bless you all amen Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.